Why is it so hard to beat the market? Why is it that study after study shows even professional money managers can't beat the stock market? It's because we're all looking at the same information. A Gallup poll estimates that more than half of Americans own stock, over 190 million people in the US alone. And that's on top of the million plus investment professionals whose job is it to pour over those financial statements, analysis, and estimate returns. Millions of investors spending hours, if not days, analyzing stocks, trying to find the best Best returns. With so many eyes on the same information, is it any wonder that many investors say the market is efficient, that you can't beat the market because everything is baked into prices? But what if nobody was watching? What if there were stocks slipping under the radar that still offered that opportunity for higher returns? That is what I'm going to show you today, how to find the stocks nobody is watching. I'm going to share a stock screener you can use, three risks to this kind of investing, and reveal five penny stocks nobody is watching. I want to get started with Trio Petroleum, ticker TPET, easily the most widely followed of our list with over 300,000 shares traded daily. Trio doesn't have the same bid ask spread problem that I'll talk about later, but stick around for how I found these companies and three risks you must know about penny stock investing. Founded in 1983, Trio just recently issued shares to develop wells in eight fields in Southern California. The company has an 85% interest in the 8,600 acre South Salinas project, which could be a strong asset with an estimated 39 million barrels of oil and 40 billion cubic feet of gas. This is a high producing area of California, surrounded by projects in the San Joaquin and Santa Maria basins. The project has a discounted present value, so the estimated cash flows on 45 million barrels of oil equivalent of $407 million. And that's only the probable undeveloped areas. This is a company with the potential for 400 million plus cash flows trading for a market cap of $46 million. The company is led by a strong team with over 40 plus years of industry experience. CEO Ingraselli worked at Texaco for 23 years along with several Wildcat developers. Stan Eschner first worked for Shell where he discovered and developed the Belgian anticline oil pool, then for Occidental Petroleum where he discovered the East Beverly Hills and Sawtelle fields which have produced over 170 million barrels of oil. The April IPO proceeds went to develop two wells, pay outstanding notes, and operating costs. The company announced a May leasehold expansion with an additional 667 acres and comes on the back of last month's announcements that it had signed a drilling rig contract that would start drilling within two weeks. And nearly half, 45% of the shares here are held by insiders, but institutionals could start picking this one up quick. I'm leaving a link to the company's investor presentation in the description below if you want to check that out. Next we have the lowest price stock on the list at under a dollar per share, Vaso Corporation, ticker VASO, at a market cap of $42 million and under 100,000 shares traded daily. Vaso is a health information services provider, a strong growth industry with managed IT systems including healthcare software and connectivity. The company also provides sales services for the medical equipment industry as well as its own devices. And this one has rock solid finances behind it. Revenue has recovered from the pandemic and grew 6% last year to $80 million. Even better though, the company has improved profitability so that net income doubled to $12 million. It's got a strong balance sheet of $20 million in cash and generated $14 million in operational cash flow. The company has extended a partnership with GE Healthcare since 2010, most recently for another five years from 2021 and reported $31 million in deferred revenue as of the last quarter. Vaso is transitioning from a pure product model to a product-based service model, which should boost that recurring revenue and continue to take this one higher. We've still got three more penny stocks to highlight, but I wanna show you how I found these and how to find your own undiscovered stocks. We'll start here with the equity screener on Yahoo Finance, but you can find most of these filters on any stock screener. The default screeners here are really basic, but you can add more filters to your list. Depending on what investing theme you're going to go for, some of these you'll want to just toggle off, like sector and price, but you can play around with the screener to help you narrow down your list. The first filter here we'll use to find these undiscovered penny stocks is average volume, how many shares are traded on a daily basis. We also want to find the stocks with a high percentage of insider ownership, companies nobody is watching, but where management has confidence in their success. There are a lot of other filters here that we can use to narrow down our list and make that job researching easier, but we're going to start with just these. For average volume, we'll start with the extremely low volume here and less than 100,000 shares traded daily. And that might seem like a lot, but compared to stocks like Apple with over 60 million shares traded, 100,000 is very low. We'll also filter for only those stocks with at least 25% of the shares held by insiders. If owners and managers aren't willing to bet on the company, I'm not either. And you can see that still leaves us with nearly 2,000 stocks, so we want to add some filters to narrow our list to 
only those best stocks to start our research. For that, I'll start with this one year percentage change in revenue and here with this earnings per share EPS filter to just to narrow our list down to a little bit more with those positive revenue growth and that are already profitable. We're gonna filter here for companies growing their sales at least 5% over the last year and then those with positive earnings per share. And you can see that still leaves us with a few hundred stocks, but you can play around with these filters a little bit to get that down to maybe a hundred or less. I wanna get back to our list, but understand this is just the beginning in finding those undiscovered penny stocks. From here, you still need to do that research into which are worth watching. And I'm gonna reveal later why that's even more important here than with any other stocks. Surge Components, ticker SPRS, is the smallest penny stock on our list at just under $17 million market cap and under 4,000 shares traded daily. Surge is a producer of electronic products and components sold mostly to OEM manufacturers in the energy, automotive, computer, telecom, and securities industries. It books sales across US, Canada, China, and South America. Sales jumped 30% last year to 52 million. And here, here's another one that has become more profitable, reporting a 49% increase in net income to $3.7 million. It's the balance sheet that really surprised me though, with 8.7 million in cash against just 1.1 million in long-term debt. Now that's net cash of $7.6 million, or 45% of this stock's value backed by cash. And the company is generating $2 million in free cash flow a year, and insiders own 47% of the shares. Now here, don't let that $25 stock price fool you. AIRT, ticker AIRT, is still a penny stock company at just $73 million market cap and 3,000 shares traded. AIRT operates 11 companies in three segments, commercial aircraft and parts, overnight air cargo, and ground support equipment sales. It operates two of the seven feeder airlines for FedEx overnight and has been the sole source DSER supplier for the US Air Force for 18 years. A revenue of 177 million was up slightly, though still down from 2020. It's the improvement in profitability that got my attention though. The company has gone from just 3% operating margin in 2020 to 5% last year. And overall revenue has doubled in the last seven years, growing its two original segments and adding that third aircraft and engine group. Management holds 50% of the shares here while institutional investors like Vanguard and Morgan Stanley own another 26% of the company. We've still got one more penny stock to watch, but the upside return doesn't come without that risk and a big warning if you're gonna be investing in these less followed stocks. The first is that these low volume stocks, so those with fewer investors buying or selling shares each day, they're gonna have those higher bid ask spreads. Now that's the difference between the price buyers are willing to buy and the sellers are willing to sell in the market. It's not usually a big issue for investors. There are so many investors in stocks like Apple or Tesla that the spread is less than a penny, but in some of these penny stocks, it can be several cents a share. Now that could mean if you just put in a market order instead of a limit when you buy these shares, you could be losing out on a few cents immediately, which can be a percent or two on these stocks. For example, while putting together the video, the bid for shares of AirT was $25 a share, but the ask was $26 each, a full dollar spread between the two. So if you put in a market order to buy those shares, the best price you'd get is that ask price of $26, which is almost half a percent above the most recent price, and 4% above what anyone is willing to give you for those shares right now. So with these, you need to look at that bid ask spread and then consider using a limit order when you buy. This is where you just tell the platform that you only wanna buy at a certain price so you don't have to worry about that spread. Now another risk to penny stock investors here is they are extremely susceptible to the pump and dump scams. Now that's when you get a group of investors buying up a stock, trying to get as many buyers in it as possible to push up the price then they sell out of the shares and let it drop back down. And, and it always does because the price is no longer being propped up by that manipulation. Folks, any stock with a price under a few bucks a share and under 20 or 30,000 shares traded on a daily basis, it's gonna be an easy target for these because those boiler rooms or the scammers, they can easily go in and manipulate that price for just a few hundred thousand dollars. And, it doesn't take much to push that price higher. Now the bad news is there's not much you can do about this except be on the lookout if it hits your stock. A clue is if the shares start surging with no real legitimate information or news directly for the company. And the next warning is just to be extra cautious of those pink sheet stocks. Those are the stocks traded on what's called the over-the-counter market or the OTC rather than on the NASDAQ or the NYSE. And the problem here is that these OTC stocks have none of the reporting requirements or regulations that you get on those other markets. So it's just much harder to know if the company is legitimate or not. Now understand, that doesn't mean that you can't invest in these OTC stocks because they are some of the least followed around and some of the best returns. Just know that in all of these stocks, the fact that they are undiscovered means you're gonna have to do all the work yourself. 
There are no research reports, no analyst recommendations or price targets to follow. You have to do that financial statement analysis that proves the long-term investment. Amco Pittsburgh, ticker AP, is one of the more actively traded here at $56 million market cap and almost 30,000 shares traded. It's also the oldest, founded in 1929 and operating in two segments, forged and cast engineered products and air and liquid processing. The company is the primary producer of pumps to the US Navy and holds market leadership in the US and Europe for its main FEP segment. Sales were up 13% last year to 390 million with net income rebounding to 3.4 million as the business recovers from the pandemic. AP has built a $349 million backlog of projects that is going to drive that revenue growth for years. This is the most widely held of the group, with insiders holding 28% of the shares and institutional managers holding 53% of the company. Click on the video to the right for the seven best stocks for true passive income, seven royalty income stocks. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.